Hello there, Classical MIDI fans. My name is Bob Ouellette, and I am the creator of the Rock Omelet YouTube channel, which is home to all of my original performances of classical music that use MIDI, virtual sampled instruments, and Cubase 12. I'm so happy that you've decided to join me today as I start a new tutorial series, which will show you how I achieve these performances. Today's video, I'm going to give you a high-level walkthrough of my Cubase template and talk to you about some of the thought processes that I have as I craft these performances and how those choices might impact what I do in my template. Now, I certainly know that this is not the only way to do things. It's probably not even the best way to do things, but it is what's worked for me as I work on my performances, and I'm hopeful that these give you some ideas on how to craft your own templates for your own work. So here are a couple of ideas to keep in mind as we go through this. Number one, a template is not the end of the process. It's the beginning. This is your blank canvas. This is the foundation upon which your own performances are built on. So don't be afraid to make any changes as you work through your pieces if you think that they might make it better. And two, with that in mind, you should never consider your template done. It's a living document. It's constantly evolving and changing as your skills improve, as your approach changes. So any changes that you make in an individual performance, take some notes and be ready to fold it back into your template if it's something that you want to maintain moving forward for future performances. So with that in mind, let's take a first look at what my template is like as of the making of this video, which is in October 2023. Let's take a look. All right, so here you see the main desktop. This is the uh, instrument panel view, and this is where I have all of my tracks. This is where I have all of the instruments uh, organized. I also have a second screen, which is where I have the mixing panel right here, and I generally flip back and forth uh, between the two whenever I go ahead and, and do some work. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that I use Cubase 12 Professional, specifically because my workflow is built around multiple buses working in tandem with each other. This provides not just balancing and pan equalization, but also stage depth settings and reverb. And that quickly moves me past the 32 group track limit of Cubase Artist. But one thing that I would really like to be very clear about is this by no means... Uh, a suggestion that this is the only way to do things. Not at all. Which DAW you use is entirely up to you based upon your own preferences for workflow, aesthetic, even the included plugins that come with it. Cubase works for me and my workflow, but your mileage might vary, so feel free to apply these ideas to the own DAW that you use for your work. So back to the template now. Up here you can see I have all of my instrument tracks group by instrument type, roughly arranged in the same way that an orchestral score is typically printed. Now, I work from a score, so this makes it easy for me to follow along and ensure that I don't forget anything. Now, within each of the groups, I have grouped the instruments by their software library. So as an example, let's take a look at the brass instruments here. You can see I've got four subfolders, uh, one for each library that has a series of brass instruments that I might use in any given piece. And within each of these library subfolders live the instrument tracks themselves. So look to the description below for a listing of every library and plugin that I use within my template, along with a link to each of them. Feel free to check each of them out and see if they might work within your own template. Let me know in the comments below if you do, and if you have any suggestions about other libraries that I could check out that might work even better, please share those too. Okay, let's take a look at one instrument track as an example. You'll see that the track is saved as part of the template in a disabled state. That way, when I first load up a new template, I have everything handy and present, ready to go, but I haven't taken up any unnecessary resources before starting to record. So when it's time to start recording a particular line, I'll enable the track that I've chosen. Uh, let's say it's this uh, first trombone here from the Cinematic Studio Brass Library in this example. We'll enable the track, and the track comes alive, and you can see that I have all of the EQ settings, I have all of the routing ready to go, and I can just begin recording. 
you'll see that looking at the channel strip for this track here, that I have my routing uh, sent to a specific bus track along with the EQ settings for this particular instrument. Um, I chose to put the EQ here in the instrument track for flexibility in the event that I want to merge multiple instruments into a single bus track at some point in the future, but I don't do that right now. Also, you'll note that I've got some bass roll off here as well to prevent uh, some frequency accumulation muddying up the final mix. Look to a future video where I go over all of my EQ and plugin settings across the entire template. I'll put a link in the video up here and into the description once that video has been uploaded to the channel. Okay, next up, let's look at the collection of bus tracks that the individual tracks route through. You can see here that I've set it up much like a traditional mixing console with an individual channel strip for every single instrument. Again, they're in the same order that they appear above in the track view. And this in turn is each routed to a stage depth bus and also blended with a dedicated reverb effects send bus for that depth. And then finally, all of the buses are routed through a submaster mix here, which is in turn dedicated to the stereo out. Uh, the instrument bus tracks are where I do my final gain staging, pan adjustments, and balancing within the mix. Having them separated out like this, as opposed to just like a single bus for first trombone, it allows me to blend together all of the different libraries, each with their own general levels, together into a cohesive whole. As far as plugins are concerned, I've also preferred the less is more strategy when it comes to single processing, as I'm trying to obtain as natural a sound as possible. Now, that said, I do use the Focusrite Channel Strip plugin here, and uh, that way I can give each instrument a final gain stage to maximize the amount of signal that I can use to balance the instruments with each other, as well as add a touch of warmth that this plugin is famous for. Uh, the one thing you might notice also that I don't use any compression at all, which is true for almost all of my instruments. Uh, percussion and vocals are excluded from that. I add just a touch of it to production to sort of take the edge off of the initial transients in an effort to avoid some peak distortion. And for the vocals, it helps uh, in smoothing out the blends as well as helping unify the sound for the soloists along with the consonants that I add to it. Again, look for a future video where I will describe this process in much greater detail. Uh, a link will be on the screen and in the description below once it's been released. Next, we'll see how each instrument track is sent to a specific group track that defines its depth on the stage. Um, I tend to craft my performances with the intent that the listener will hear the orchestra as though they were standing right behind the conductor, so in theory the brass should sound slightly further away than the strings. So to achieve this effect, I have set up eight different depths, and each of those depths has its own reverb. Again, I'll go into this more in depth in a future video, but basically how this is done is that each of the reverb uh, plugins are set with the same basic setting and tail length, but by tweaking the balance between the early and late reflections, you can simulate distance from the listener's ear. Also, having the reverbs each in their own effects send gives me the flexibility to balance the original dry signal with the generated effect in different ways if I want to simulate different types of performance spaces, for example. These stage depth buses and their associated reverb sends are also very easily copied in case you want to replicate a non-traditional positioning in the orchestra space. For example, a trumpet player playing in the back of the house or chorus members being under the stage, for example. Finally, all of the stage depth buses are in turn routed to the Submaster 2 bus, which is where I ensure that the final mix doesn't peak the meters before going to the master. All of that gain staging before now that allows the pianissimo moments to be clearly heard would in turn destroy your ears with a massive amount of distortion when the orchestra goes to full blast if I didn't do that. So it's here that I can tweak the overall volume of the final performance up or down as needed. For example, Saturn from the planets has quadruple forte moments that would lead me to lower this slightly to allow for that without distortion, but Venus is delicate enough to give me the opportunity to boost it so that you can hear the nuance more clearly. I've also added a tape drive plug in here to provide both a bit of glue to blend the mix together, as well as to add a little bit more warmth as well. I found that from my tastes, the warmth that a tape drive plug in provides something 
beyond what your standard SSL bus compressor gives and makes it a bit more realistic to the ear, as though you were listening to the recording of an actual live performance. Last but not least, the two bus routes to the master output, and that has only a couple of plugins in it, a brick wall limiter to ensure that there are no distortion elements in the final mix down, and also restream in case I want to record the output for Cubase live in my video capture software. So there you have it. An introduction to my template and some high-level insight beyond some of the decisions that I made in its construction. My hope is that it's giving you at least a few ideas on how to approach setting up your own template as well. So please, feel free to drop any questions, comments, suggestions, or even critiques in the comments below. I am completely self-taught and I'm sure that there are many other and better ways to accomplish what I'm attempting here. Again, as this series progresses, I'm going to go into much greater detail about some of the things that I've talked about here. So watch this channel for that in the very near future, as well as any other tips on how I record, what libraries I use for various instruments, and how to help translate in a consistent way musicality into your mixes. So thank you all again for your support. I am truly excited for what's to come, and I hope to get to share it with you all very, very soon. If you haven't already, and anything in this video has helped you in any way at all, I would sincerely appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell to be informed whenever anything new is dropped, and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you at the next concert. Goodbye for now.